Hello, everybody. Sunday at Elijah here. Uh, welcome to another program on the Creative and Innovative Hour program. This program is fast becoming a favorite for a lot of people because here <coughs> you could actually, uh, you know, uh, connect to the world. You can connect to the world and connect to uh, what, you know, what is being done to make Africa great and to uh, build a better Africa. So, uh, you know, this is a platform that through the help of God and someone like uh, Shola that is here with us, that's my co-host, you know, he gave me the idea that we should do something more concrete to be, to be able to help Africa, you know, uh, attain, uh, you know, development in a practical matter, in a practical manner. And so we started this platform and we thank God that people are connecting with each other and, um, you know, the movement has started. And it's just the beginning because right now we are going to be bringing a lot of creative, innovative people to this platform and we are also going to be demonstrating to you a lot of the uh, inventions that Nigerians are making. And also we believe that God will also be raising up a lot of financiers and we are going to be... Uh, connected with a lot of people who will be able to finance and help this project move forward. Well, let me introduce uh, our guests for today, especially Shola. Shola, maybe I will introduce you, Shola, and then you will introduce our guests for today. Okay, this is Shola here, who is my co-host today. Hi, Shola. How are you doing, sir? And how is everybody doing? Uh, I'm so excited to be here. And uh, the movement has started, like uh, Dr. Sunday said, and we, we believe it's going it's growing already and we believe it's going to go beyond our own uh, wildest imagination and uh, we are so thankful to god that we're here today and i want to thank our viewers for sharing and coming on online uh today <clears throat> like we always do we're having uh, uh guests on the show people that are making great strides in their field of uh of uh, profession and uh, in the field of science and innovation and uh, like we always do we have someone new today a dynamic uh, individual who has come on our uh, community we have the DASIC community he is part of us and he's also in the he's doing a great work already and i would like to introduce you to him i can't say too much about him because he will uh, tell us what he's doing what he's about who he is and uh, without further ado, I want to introduce to us Brother Karo Akamune. Brother Karo, you're welcome to the program. Uh, thank you, Shola. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, DSA, Dr. Sonia Adelaja. Uh, the work we are doing is a great work. It's a work that uh, requires faith, patience, time because when you talk of science and technology time is a key factor patience is a key factor africa is behind but we're making progress i'm a technology developer uh, just to my brothers and sisters out there watching um, i wear different hats and one of the hats is that of technology development i work with inventors and innovators primarily in africa and specifically in nigeria because charity begins at home i was born in nigeria i spent the first 22 years of my life in nigeria and um, I'm, I'm 42 right now and uh, charity begins at home so we have to start from the home front you know Yes, there are opportunities for me to, to work with inventors and innovators here in the United States of America. However, I believe deeply in my heart that I've been led to start with my brothers and sisters in Nigeria. Um, it, my philosophy in life is the growth and development of the entire planet is paramount. And for that to occur, no family should be left behind. In a sense, we can look at the seven continents as families. Africa is one of the continents. Africa is a member of the planetary family. I was born there, 
and clearly we are behind all hands need to be on deck to help africa move forward so if it was just for money or profit i would be working with folks here in the u.s <laughs> you know however i'm a man of the spirit I, le I love to connect with my father the paradise father who lives in me and who also lives in you and in us all and to follow the leading of the spirit and i'm persuaded in my heart that this is the direction god the father wants me to follow i've been doing this for over 25 years i, I did not just start yesterday working with inventors innovators in nigeria working from the grassroots interacting with leaders as well my approach is this you have to tackle it from the grassroots and you also have to interact with people who may be called the, the shakers and the movers in society to try to tickle and tease push and pull bring pressure totally at least to bear on them to do the right thing for the good of the land so africa is a member of the planetary family what are we going to do to see that africa grows and develop science and technology is key we have to tackle the problem from the grassroots so in the past over the years and up to today i interact with secondary school students high school students Pastor Sunday always talks about value system. This is very, very important. With the right value system, we will see remarkable progress in the area of inventions and innovations in science and technology. And we need the youngsters. We need to inculcate the, value, the right value system in the youngsters. We need to work with them. So that is what I mean by grassroots, you know, to interacting with children, with teenagers. A lot of them, you surprisingly, and this may not be surprising to some of us, a lot of them have outstanding, remarkable skill sets inherent in their persons in the area of science and technology. But these skill sets, these gifts and talents and abilities need to be nurtured, encouraged, nurtured, you see. So I work, I work with uh, youngsters. And over the years, by the grace of God, I've been able to interact and work with scientists from different parts of Nigeria. Nigeria is rich in mineral resources and other natural resources. Nigeria is rich in human resources as well. However, I'm of the opinion that we need to fix our value system. The value system, if the value system is not fixed, you will not see the fruits of the enormous human resources. The greatness of our human resources is hindered, hampered, shoved aside, threatened by the present prevailing value systems. I'm a realist. I'm an objective person. Of course, as humans, we are subjective as well. It's natural. It comes with the territory. We have our subjective positions, even our biased opinions. Nevertheless, for the advancement of civilization and culture on the planet, we are duty bound to be objective, to bring in a lot of objectivity. I'm not going to come here and say Nigeria is a great country with enormous natural and human resources, the giant of Africa, the pride of the planet. I'm not going to do that. Are we great? In my opinion, we are, potentially speaking, we are great. Potentially speaking, Nigeria is great. But in actuality, in, in the area of manifestation, 
for the ordinary human eyes to see and to consider to be real and tangible, the greatness of Nigeria has not been fully realized. I am of the opinion that it is not even 40% realized yet. How can we say we are the giant of Africa? And in actuality, Nigeria as a country is not the leader in inventions and innovations in the area of science and technology in Africa. I'm not talking about individual successes. As Nigerians, we have individual successes in Nigeria and around the world. However, as a collective, I am persuaded in my heart that we do not have that great success that some of my Nigerian brothers and sisters claim we have. We have to be pragmatic, we have to be objective, we have to be sincere, we have to be honest with ourselves. Over the years, uh, but Carol, have, I'm seeing you yes, right sir. now. In a, um, we are showing some photographs of some students in the classroom with computers in the classroom and i saw that you are one of you are in one of those pictures can you tell us about these pictures and uh, these children that we are looking at this student what is happening here outstanding these students we're looking at is a different project i'm involved in as a computer scientist it's a project by my class the class of 1992 of one of the greatest schools in my biased opinion <laughs> of one of the greatest schools in nigeria and even africa at least in my day you know what can you tell us so, about this school? correct the school is uh, called dsc technical high school in delta state dsc stands for delta steel company it is a common knowledge in Nigeria, and for those who are not Nigerians who may be watching, in Nigeria we have steel companies. Yes. So, in Nigeria there is a steel company called Delta Steel Company. It's in Delta, it's yeah. in Delta State, Nigeria. There's a high school owned by that steel company. I was privileged to go to that high school. I did my senior secondary education there. I did my junior secondary education in nana college delta state and my senior secondary education in dsc technical high school is it a private, so my class a private school in a sense we may say it's a private school because it is owned by the steel company you know but, it, but right now there's uh, some involvement uh with the government uh and there, there are some issues which i don't want to go into right now and nevertheless it's still one of the most progressive public schools, I don't call it a public school, you know, the schools in Nigeria, you know, but there's some level of private and all that. Anyway, so my class, uh, uh, and, uh, some things have changed over the years with regards of ownership of the school, I mean, a time may not permit us to go into all that right now, uh, but my, my class, my graduating class of 1992 came together to set up a computer science club and coding clinic. The high school has a uh, computer. What do you call it, please? A coding clinic? Coding clinic. It's a computer okay. programming coding clinic. It has to do with coding, computers, okay. computer programming, computer, computer languages. Computer coding, okay. Yeah. Correct. Computer coding. Coding clinic. Right. So my graduating class set up this uh, club, computer science club, and coding clinic there, there's a computer lab in place with computers already so we got wow. instructors instructors I, I, who are working in the field in the information technology field it professionals they own a computer company in the field so they are having practical real life on hands experience in the field rendering services has been set on Pardon me? This has been set up since when? About two, about uh, October 2017. So it's going to a year now. 
So it's yeah. about uh, maybe nine months now running. So we got IT professionals to, to work with us. They partner with us and they teach the students about information and communication technology, about computer wow. programming languages, about web development, about the digital economy, digital technology, and other subject areas in this computer science. So what area. you are trying to say is the example that you people are setting really is an example for all of us who are graduates of one secondary school or the other, that we could actually do the same thing for each of our secondary schools. Is that what you're trying to say? Thank you, sir. Exactly. And wow. good news, some individuals from other schools, alumni from other schools, individuals who have graduated from other schools, they are getting in touch with us and saying, hey, we like what you're doing. We appreciate what we're doing. We would like to replicate it in our secondary schools. We gra we've graduated from these secondary schools, and we would like to use it as a way to give back. So now we are getting into networks with other individuals, fellow Nigerians in Nigeria and outside Nigeria who want to replicate what my class is doing. I happen to be a member of the project team that is spearheading this um, uh, this particular cause and right. it, it is behind the project team is an entire class of forward-looking Nigerians Nigerians not angels drop down from the sky Nigerians who are, who are, who are committing time talent money and other resources to see that it works and we are seeing progress already in the lives of these children they are learning how to code, how to write programming languages, build websites, maintain websites, build apps. This is part of it, app, app development, creation of apps. So it's a blessing. Now, will, Shola, will you tell the people uh, about the, the platform so that everybody could also be able to come to that platform where they could meet Carol? and where everybody could get together and get similar ideas so that they could also, you know, get similar ideas and bring other ideas and, we you know, we could promote this innovation that, uh, further. Absolutely. Uh, well, for our viewers, everybody watching from all over the world, uh, we have a, a group that is called DASIC, D-A-C-I-C. -C. That group is a community is a community of Africans and people of African descent. So we are coming together as innovators, inventors, resource persons, entrepreneurs, uh, philanthropists, uh, and all kind of people that are interested in the development of Africa. So we have a group on Facebook. Uh, DSA has a vision for Africa, and we have been able to now set up this group to say, Let's come together and connect so we can work with one another. Uh, Brother Caro, Caro that is on here with us today, is a part of that group. So if you want to connect with Caro, please join that group. The, the banner of the group will soon be shown on this program as we go on. But It's on type, already. They are showing it right now. Oh, okay. Just go on that. that type D-A-C-I-C-S and you'll be able to join that group right now. So if you're interested, for example, Carol just said, those kids are coding already. They're able to build apps. There are some apps that can be put together, and before you know, we have uh, another Uber. We have another uh, uh, Lyft. We have another Airbnb going on from Africa. So if you want to be partners, like uh, uh, Dr. Sunday pointed out, uh, you you have a, a secondary school, a high school in Africa you want to sponsor, you want to start a uh, science club, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do to, be, to, to move Africa forward. Join that group. Once you join, you will be asked three simple questions because it's not a group for everybody. It's a group for people that want to lend their resources, your resources in the form of your inventions, 
your funds that you want to use to better Africa, your um, your capital, whatever you have to move Africa forward. You join that group and you will meet people of like mind, people you can work with, people that you you will be able to vet them and trust them and you know work together. So answer those three simple questions. Join the group and uh, let's move Africa forward. We have. Like Dr. Sonny said, this group is, is catching fire right now. We even need more team members to help us because as I am one person now, the amount of people I have to talk to in a single week, the amount of requests I'm getting in a single week, I have my company to run, I have things that I'm engaged in. So we need to work as a team. We need teams, people from Africa, Europe, America, all over the place. Join us, let's work together. Uh, like I said in one of the broadcasts, we have Facebook, we have a LinkedIn. But when you look at China, China did not rely solely on Facebook. They developed their own Facebook. China did not de de rely completely on Amazon. They developed their own kind of Amazon. So why can't Africa do the same thing? Something from Africa that we can present to the world, that not only Africa will benefit, but the world will benefit. So if you are that kind of person, you are a professional, you are a resource person, a scientist, inventor, uh, investor, philanthropist, join that group is on, uh, is on the screen right now, or you type D-A-C-I-C-S and you will be led to that group. Answer those questions, join us, let's work together. Thank you so much. Now, when we were talking with uh, Carol just now, he said the ch children that our team was showing, that is a different project. But what is the initial project? The initial project you started to talk about is the technolo as a technological developer, which is what is the goal and the mission of that technological development that you are, you are started to talk about? Thank you. Uh, please permit me, uh, before I answer that question, I'm going at a later later on. I'm going to put in information about the coding clinic on uh, our six our six page Facebook okay. on our innovation on Facebook. So any so anyone who may wish to replicate what my class is, you can touch with me, and uh, I'm, I'll be willing to assist. And you can go to the the social media handles of this coding clinic, and also learn and see what we're doing and learn from there. Even without having, even without having to, without talking with me, but you can talk with me as well, you know. And the name of the club is Code Club THS. Yes. T as in Tom, H as in Tom, S as in Sam. Code Club THS. You go to Facebook and YouTube. You key in or type in Code Club THS. You get you get that. Now, uh, back to technology development. What is the aim? What is the goal? Nigeria is not supposed to be majoring in consum consumption. We should not just be merely consumers of man-made goods and services. In all fairness to Nigeria and Nigerians, we do have individuals in Nigeria and companies in Nigeria that are engaged practically in the area of production of man-made goods and services. However, the percentage is not high enough. We have not even reached the critical point. When we get to the critical point, it will become so obvious. The, criti the critical point is that point where things tip over. The critical point is that point where the cork is filled to overflowing. We have not reached the critical point yet. A country like the United States of America, in all fairness, we may say they have reached the critical point. Okay. Because the entire planet is feeling the impact, direct, practical, tangible impact of inventions and innovations in science and technology coming out of the United States of America. 
Is the entire planet feeling the same impact coming out of Nigeria? Let's be fair and honest with ourselves. We have to highlight our successes and our strengths. We also have to be willing to face objectively to face our weaknesses, our shortcomings, and our failures. But what can we do? Exactly. What can we do? So this is why I'm in one of the key reasons I'm involved in this project. One of the key things which I've emphasized earlier is we have to change the value system. We have to work on our value system. And I also talked about patience in the beginning because this will take time. As Nigerians, we should have a vision of 50 years and 100 years. Uh, a presidential aspirant, I, I, know, I don't want to mention his name, came on your show and said in 10 years, Nigeria will be better than Germany, <laughs> than the United States. <laughs> With all due respect <laughs> to that brother, and in all fairness, I notice the brother has some wonderful strengths, and he has made some remarkable contributions to Nigeria, and I applaud him for that. <laughs> I give him the honor that he deserves. And I believe he will always be a great asset to Nigeria and to this planet. However, in my humble opinion, in all fairness, we will not be better than Germany. We will not be greater than the United States of America in 10 years. I don't see it happening. Can it happen? Of course, miracles happen. But in all fairness, I don't think so. Nevertheless, we should not be discouraged. Maybe in, hundred, maybe in 100 years. <laughs> maybe less than yes. And time is needed. We have to work on our value system. We have to create a culture in Nigeria that identifies inventors and innovators, identifies them, honors them, celebrates them, rewards them. We have to create that value system. But you have, we have, to you, you have started doing something like that, isn't it? Yes, sir. I have started. And I'm encouraging more people to come on board and lead us. Tell us about what you have started to do in Nigeria, identifying, celebrating, and locating and supporting uh, inventors and innovators. Good. So one of the pictures I was shown was a gentleman with a, with a, 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 a machine that looks, that has like a, that is kind of spherical in shape. You got like two spheres. Or, or I think we have those photographs. Can we be showing them too? Yes. Okay. Yes, please. So it's a, it's a bicycle that rides on the water. Hmm. That a yeah, brother, I think I saw that. Okay. Yeah. A bicycle that rides on the water. And I walk with no, him. Is that the bicycle? Is it, is it, are we showing the right one or the wrong one? Bicycle no, this is, this is this is something else. This is something else. Uh, we can come to this, this. We can come to this later. Okay, near that blue boy. But the, the the bicycle rides on the water, and uh, this is a, a, a another. Product, is it this one? Another is it is it this one? No, but we can talk about this as well because everything is related. Yeah, this is the bicycle, the water bicycle. Yeah, let's talk about the bicycle. Tell us about this. Okay. Everything is related in, in what I do. The bicycle rides on the water. So, as a technology developer, I work with inventors and innovators to get that idea that they have in their minds to become an actual product in the hands of consumers. To do that, we, go to, we have to go through different phases. We, we, we have to look at the idea and ask the right questions and do research work, research and development in order to get that idea to become a prototype. We have to test the prototype. We have to now get feedback from potential consumers or clients with regards to the prototype. And then we have to go a step further and turn the prototype into an actual product 
that people can use. These things take time, it takes money. So I, I bring in my intelligence as a scientist, my knowledge of science and technology. How do, how do you to, find these people or how do they find you? Good. Sometimes it's providence. And you see, in Nigeria, I'm involved with, uh, I, I, one of the key things I did in my early years was in being involved, being, I was going to secondary schools, interacting with students who are members of what we call Jets Club. Jets, J-E-T-S. It stands for Junior Engineers, Technologists, and Scientists. I remember, I remember that club in Nigeria. Is it still existing in all the high schools and secondary schools in Nigeria? I wouldn't say in all, but in some. So in okay. Jazz Club, you can easily identify Nigerians with creative abilities. That is one way. So for you listening to me out there, please, my brothers and sisters, if you are really interested in the growth and development of Nigeria, the Jets Club is one way. So this is a grassroots, grassroots angle. You tackle it from the grassroots. No, you this, this bicycle, this bicycle that I'm looking at now on the water. What is the purpose of it? So is it for people who cannot afford to buy a boat or a ship, or is it for transportation of goods or people? What is the purpose of it? It looks like cylinder to me. Yeah. There's a so video. It looks more about recreational. It. Sorry. There's a video on you. To so yeah, me, it problem. looks more recreational. Thank you. It is for recreational purposes. So, the the idea is to have it in a, like amusement parks where you got swimming pools. And for 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 recreational purposes, people to, to mount on the bicycle and just ride in the pool as a as a form of recreation. Also as a form of transportation in communities in Nigeria, you know. However, sadly, sadly, the brother that I worked with in this, he passed away a few years ago. Oh, you know, oh. The, the brother sadly, who invented this thing? Yes, he passed away. Who invented this? Oh. Yes, he passed away a few years ago. Wow. And sadly, I'll... Uh, is the guy on that picture right now. His name is Anthony Orobo. God bless his soul. May his soul rest in peace. Do you know how he passed away? He no. was he was riding on a bicy on a motorbike, Okada. We call them Okada in Nigeria. And the Okada had an accident with a with what we call truck or lorry in Nigeria, or tipper or trailer. So wow. it was in an accident. The Okada had an accident with a with a trailer. You know. I was on ground in Nigeria working with this brother. We met, do you know we met with senators? And do you know what some senators told us? They told this gentleman, go to the university. We will sponsor your education. <laughs> yeah, go to the university first, then we can talk with you. I think we are missing something in Nigeria. University is good. It's great. I'm a university graduate myself. However, we need to understand that sometimes some people are not called out for universities. Back to what we were talking about earlier. The ability wow. to identify... You know, most people. of the inventors... And most of the people in America and the white American, Canadians, British, they, most of them don't go to university. Oh. It is Nigerians who Thank are you. addicted to out. university. Thank you. Even this, university, even this university, the brother can go to the university later. You are a right. senator. You are very influential. We, we met with you. The brother sat down with you guys, about three of them. Showed you he, he had different kinds of inventions and innovations, remarkable ones. He went by the name Antogensis Eugensis. His head was hot. He was like living in another planet. He was a remarkable scientist. And we worked closely wow. together. 
you know, I, I brought my ideas and suggestions from my knowledge of science and technology, pitched with him, we banded together, and we were working. Then it was told this gentleman, go to the university. Also, we and did we this. Just, so we just lost this genius, this mind. We just lost just him like that. We lost him like that. After like some that. time, the brother was a little bit you know, but he continued pressing on. But we just but lost him. We just lost him. No, we would not have died at all. Somebody, riding on. Hello, guys. Someone, somebody put on. Somebody put on a Facebook or YouTube. Put it off, please, because your voice is being uh, echoed. You need to put off your sound. Yeah, on, on my part, masters are muted. I, masters are out. Shola, maybe you put on something. You have to put it off. Go ahead, sir. Oh, okay. Okay. So this brother, Anthony Orobo, Antogensis Eugensis, he went by in, in Delta State, Nigeria. He was also involved in Jazz Club. We, both of us, we were involved in interacting with students in the Jazz Club. He died for nothing. There was no way... No need for that brother to be riding Okada in Nigeria. An individual like that, if we have leaders with the right mentality, with the right mindset, they could have easily sorted that brother out, identified him, honored him, celebrated him, provided a vehicle for him, given right. him some grants to help him in his work. There was no way that brother would have died in an Okada or Moto motorbike accident. He just died for nothing, in a sense. Sadly, we, we did a presentation before a, a commissioner of science and technology. And there may be no need for me to mention the name. However, we did a presentation. The commissioner of science and technology came to us some years ago in, in Delta State, Nigeria. He came with the camera crew and everything, newsmen. We did a presentation. He was, he was, he was, uh, we, we did a presentation with regards to the water bicycle, and we, we also intimated to him that, hey, we have other inventions and innovations. He was filled with praises. He was impressed. He said, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. He was speaking with his associates that came to him. Please take notes. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Guess what? Nothing came out of it. Where did we do the presentation? This is another thing. I don't know if you gentlemen, Dr. Sunday and uh, Shola. Shola, if you are aware of this. In Nigeria, we have what we call technology incubation centers. Oh, yeah? So we as do? a technology. Yeah. Where? Technology incubation centers. Where? All over Nigeria. All over our beloved country. Who said that, Bob? Your government and my government. You see, Nigeria's problem is not policies. Nigeria's problem is the practical, tangible, please take note of my words, my fellow viewers. Practical, tangible implementation of the policies that we already have in place. Nigeria's problem is not policies. I don't think because we have intelligent minds in Nigeria who have come up with great ideas and policies. These policies have gone through the House of Representatives, through the, the Senate. It has gone through the executive arm, through Asu Rock. Great policies have been approved. The news media has, have shouted about it, sang the praises of this policy. But the, pre, the, a key problem with Nigeria is the implementation of the policy. So we have technology incubation centers. Some brilliant minds in Nigeria some years ago came up with this idea, put, came up with a package, presented it to the government, and thankfully the government accepted it. The government did not just accept it. The government went further to secure lands. The government did not just secure lands. Kudos to the Nigerian government. The government went further to in ensure that there were buildings on those lands. The government did not end there. 
The government employed Nigerians who are technologically and scientifically inclined to run these centers. But again, when you talk of corruption and tribalism and short-sightedness in Nigeria, guess what? Some of these centers are run by people who are not even interested in science and technology. They are not really passionate about advancements in the area of inventions and innovations in science and technology. They don't even have a clue about the pivotal role science and technology plays in the advancement of human civilization and culture. They have no clue. It's just another job. This is another problem in Nigeria, putting the wrong people in the right places. Another problem is the maintenance culture. So you, we are praising the government. In all fairness, look at all the steps the Nigerian government has gone through to ensure that we have technology incubation centers. And what is the purpose of these technology incubation centers? The purpose, or one of the purpose, or some of the purposes of the technology incubation centers is this. What I've said already, identify. Nigerians who are creative, inventive, innovative, who have ideas about goods and services. These ideas are laying dormant in their minds, but these Nigerians are passionate. They want to bring these ideas into fruition. They want to create. They want to behave like God, their maker. Create. Because God has put his spirit within us. We are in the image, made in the image and likeness of God. As God our Father is, that is how we are. We are creators. So as a human being, you can create things. God will be helping you, directly or indirectly. You may not even believe that God exists, but God makes his gifts to be shared across, both on the good and the bad both on the righteous and the unrighteous. It causes the rain to fall on all. That is how great and loving this God is. So we have Nigerians who are creating. So the government put technology integration centers in place to identify these Nigerians, to give them free accommodation. This is your office space. You are not going to pay. This is what the government has done, Nigerian government. Come. This okay. office space is yours, free of charge. The now begin to work on that idea you have. Come up with a prototype. And then, with time, come up with an actual product that can be placed in the hands of Nigerians all over Nigeria, Africans all over Africa, humans all over the world. But management is a problem. Put, having the right people to run these organizations is a problem. Then, we've, the Nigerian government also has a system in place where these inventors and innovators all over Nigeria would meet, maybe once a year, in Abuja, to showcase their inventions and innovations. It, it is happening as we speak in Nigeria. But guess what? In some cases, the managers of these technology incubation centers, do you know what they do? They tell these inventors, they tell us, they will say, well, we may not have money to take you to Abuja. We may not have the resources, the logistics in place. Give us this invention that you have. You have the prototype. It's a working prototype. Give it to us. Sometimes it's a non-working prototype. However, you have it, and then you have the materials in place on how it works. Give these things to us. We will go to Abuja and represent you. They leave the scientists behind, my brothers and sisters, in Delta State in Anambra State, in Kogi State, in Sokoto State, in Lagos State. Sometimes they leave them behind. Yes, sometimes they take them with them, but sometimes it doesn't happen. Guess what? These managers will take these inventions to Abuja, showcase them. Do you know who show up in these, in these seminars, in these um, symposiums? Do you know who show up? Chinese show up. Brothers and sisters, our, bro our beloved brothers and sisters from the yellow rays, Chinese, they show up. Indians show up. And guess what? Americans show up. People show up from different parts of the world. And do you know what these managers do? 
they sell the inventions to the Chinese, to the Americans. And guess what? They put the money in their pocket. The inventor in Delta State, in Anambra, in Kogi, in Sokoto, gets nothing. They come back to them and say, oh, we showcased your product. Oh, um, but you did not come out first. Don't worry, keep improving, keep working, we are with you. Meanwhile, they have put $5,000 in their pocket, $10,000 in their pocket. Guess what? The Chinese man takes that in prototype to China. The American takes the prototype to America. And maybe in five years' time or seven years' time, we have a product shipped to Nigeria from China, made in China. And guess what? Nigerians are buying them. The Chinese economy grows as a result. More billionaires emerge out of China as a result. More millionaires emerge out of the United States as a result. And what does Nigeria get out of that? Nigerians just get a product. <laughs> that let, they me, use. let me ask a question because of time. Let me ask a question because of time. And because we kind of trying to follow a, a, a structure, it's so sad for the other brother that uh, built that uh, bicycle uh, that runs on water. I think I seen something like that here on one of the videos in America. Okay. Something right. that a, a well, a better made prototype. I've seen it run on water and it's for purposes. But what I want to ask as the result of our time structure is. What you know the problems now from what you are enlightening to us. You know the process. What is happening with the process? What the problem is? How these inventions are being hijacked, and they've been hijacked. Then parties from outside of the world are coming in to see these inventions and just giving chicken uh, feeds to these uh, government representatives. They take the money and these people take it back to their country. And before you know it, Nigerians are consuming the inventions that come out of that uh, stolen uh, intellectual properties. So you know all that, how that works now. Based on what you're doing, we want to find out what is your current project now? How have you put it together? What is the current project whereby people watching can say, okay, we want to partner with you. We want to make sure this one don't fall through the, through the cracks. And if you don't have a current project now, what are the proposal? What do you want to go? Um, what do you want to do going forward? This program, this uh, 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 innovation hour, is to showcase people like you, so that people watching from Nigeria and across the world can partner with you. So now it's like you are you are pitching now. So we want to know your current project that you are currently on now and all your future, uh, your proposals that are in the pipeline so that people can start thinking about connecting with you going forward. Good. My current project, I'm heavily involved in broadcasting messages through videos, audio, and texts to Nigerians, in Nigeria and around the world, with regards to changing our value system. We got to get the value system right. If we don't get it right, you're going to be building an infrastructure on a foundation that is not strong. I call it superstructure. Our value system is a superstructure. Get your superstructure right. Your infrastructure will fall in place. That's number one. Also, I'm involved in politics behind the scenes. I talk with prospective leaders and current leaders in Nigeria. Let it bring in pressure to bear on them, directly, indirectly, telling them directly, also upfront, this is what we need to do. Trying to get them to see my point of view. Very important. Also, one of the pictures you showed, a, a beautiful looking picture, it, it is a, a machine that converts non-biodegradable wastes, non-biodegradable non -biodegra non waste products 
converts it to different petroleum products like kerosene, petrol. Is it this one? This and are you talking of this machine? Uh, let's see uh, if it, when it comes on the screen, I will see it. I'll let you know. And the byproduct, there's a byproduct from that machine. That byproduct is like a slug, a thick. Yes, this very machine, exactly this very one. This machine converts. It, co it converts what? Non-biodegradable wastes like plastic bags. In Nigeria, we call we have what we call. Yes, go ahead. Pure water bag. Go ahead. Go ahead. Water sachets. So you have plastic bottles, plastic bags. And other plastic products, nylon bags, you know, different plastic products that you know they are even a nuisance. If not properly disposed of, they can clog the, the drainage systems. Right. They make the environment untidy, unkept, and different kinds of problems that it creates, even affect agriculture. So this product will take, this machine will take these plastic products and convert them. So it's like reverse engineering as it were. Because this plastic... That's was, right. You know, That's what I was about to say. Hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbon. So, so you reverse you reverse engineer petroleum uh, uh, finished product back to petroleum product. Exactly. Exactly. And then there's a byproduct. It's a liquid thick slug. Okay. That byproduct, we now add sand to it, and we come up with interlocking stones or bricks. So at the end of the day, really, or no waste residue. So this is an environmentally wow. friendly product. The scientist that came up with this, his name is Emeka Nelson, and one of these days I would like him to come on this show, and I would want to do him the honor to explain more in details how it right. works, you know. Please, so as a, we need him on the show. Yeah, so as a technology developer, I work with him. You see, I put in my, I bring in my suggestions and ideas because I'm a scientist myself. With my knowledge of science and technology, I bring that on board to assist him in what he's doing. I also invest money in what he's doing. I invest time in also looking for other investors, and in also promoting the work. I'm also there with him as a big brother to encourage him never to give up. This is one of the most primary things I do. Money is not everything. Because in Nigeria, we will say, some people will say, I don't have money. Oh, you're in America, you have money, that's why you can do it. No, my dear. Even with 10,000 Naira, you can do something. So this person who invented this is based in Nigeria? He's based in Nigeria. He lives in Anambra State. Wow. He's a young man in his early 20s. Look, we must not allow this man to perish. Uh, Shola, you know, the same yes, idea I spoke about the other lady, why don't we present this idea to some of our people on this platform or on this, yeah, who have come on this uh, uh, hub, that have access to money and to big money. You tell me, Shola, what are the processes that this man need to go through to be able to secure support to get millions of dollars? Because if we are able to produce this on a large scale from Nigeria, it will not just take care of the needs of Nigeria, it could become a major export for Nigeria. So I want to hear from you what do we need before we could get to a place of securing millions of dollars? And you know what I'm talking about. You know that we have people on this platform who have access to securing millions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars for this kind of project. So how can we get there? Well, uh, well, thank you for that. Uh, uh, well, we, we, I, I'm, I'm glad that the person is working with uh, Carol right now. And uh, the other gentleman, one of the uh, guests on the show, I've started working with them already. We're trying to find a way out their, their product.
can be, you know, brought to the United States as a way of import. So we are working in, we're looking into that right now. For this person, the, the steps, like I said, is in the right uh, place working with Carol. And what I needed from Carol, or maybe what I wanted to say is that there has to be a way to uh, secure you, you live in the United States, you understand. There has to be a way to secure the intellectual property of this uh, person. Uh, make sure that, you know, this intellectual property is secured. And uh, is there, uh, another thing is, that is talking about the steps now. Another thing is, do we have a prototyping company, a good one in Nigeria? We need to, uh, I, I will go into the research, but I'm presenting to our viewers too. We need a good prototyping company in Nigeria that can build a good prototype a, because you know prototype prototypes are really the working that is prototype is what you use to explain to investors what you're doing so we need a good working prototype and there are prototyping companies in the US I don't know if we have in Nigeria we should have and prototyping is just about manufacturing so when you have fabrication companies, they can do prototypes. So we need good prototypes. When we can get good prototypes, then we have the intellectual uh, pro properties. Another thing is, I don't know uh, the patent laws in Nigeria. For you to create something, an invention, it has to be protected first of all. So we need to get prototypes, the... Uh, invention idea has to be uh, protected after that once we get the prototype then we'll not start looking from outside of the country like from the US here we do a good video we need a really good video uh, the other gentleman that came last week I looked up some of his videos they were not clear enough they're not explanatory enough you have to have good explanatory video to explain how this thing works so that we can now start pre presenting to people not only in Nigeria but outside of Nigeria. With that, we can start bringing interest. And like Dr. Sunday said, on this broadcast, we are doing that already, showcasing these things. And I'm so glad we're bringing like what uh, Caro is doing now, we're showing it on here. Then, after this broadcast, because on this broadcast we are talking and we are showing, but we now move to the community where we now start to communicate. And I'm looking for greater participation on the community where we now start to form ourselves into uni units. People that specialize in pro prototyping in a unit. People that specialize in uh, getting patents. People that specialize in getting investors. That is the task at hand now that I will be looking at. So that pro that will be our process. For example, for you to come on this show, there is a process we're going through. We're forming a process now. So I'll be working on that like uh, Dr. Sunday requested. And uh, by in the coming weeks, we'll be able to. But that young man that Carol just told us now will be a really good uh, test case for what I just explained. Yeah, but also... Uh, do you agree? Thank you so much. Do you, do you think, Shola, that maybe you have to go and talk on this idea with some of these financiers? Do you think we could actually make this into a mass production kind of thing that will bring money for the country? Uh, you mean? Yes, yes. We, we, the, the, thing, the thing here is this. These things can be made in Nigeria. It can be made in Nigeria. What we are looking at now is funding. It can be made in Nigeria, used in Nigeria, and exported. For sure, that is that is correct. Okay. Mass production. May, uh, we can do that. Uh, chip in uh, a word or two here, please. Yes. We have we have a uh, prospects. Uh, believe it or not, in United Arab Emirates, UAE. There was a, there's a Nigerian that was in talks with key leaders in UAE for us to actually make this come up with, for us to actually make maybe two or three for them to use in their country. And the process is still on. Yes, exactly. The Nigerian government is seeing us, but what are they doing? Now you see UAE is already stepping in. They want to work with us. Uh, They're showing interest. Let, let yes. me say something. 
It takes. It's a process that takes uh, some time. Right. Let, let, let me say something right quick. Go ahead. I, I'm sorry. But let me just say something right quick. Uh, you know, yeah, we understand the Nigerian government the way it is. The Nigerian government comprises of people, comprises of Nigerians. And that is the mindset that needs to be revamped. And that's what Dr. Sunday is doing. And that's why Dr. Sunday started all this. So we, you and I know that the mentality of Nigerians needs revamping, needs to be changed. Correct. And just like in America here, JFK said, uh, think not what your country will do for you, but what you will do for your country. Hallelujah. As the Nigerian state is now, it needs help from us. So we yeah. want to put aside getting help from them and do what we can do. If you want to partner with UAE, we go ahead and do that. It will come to a time where the minds of Nigerians will be revamped. They, then the leaders too will be able to embrace the things you know we are talking about. So if, for Nigerian government, you have you have encountered it so many times. We don't want to, that, and that's why uh, Dr. Sunday is coming up with this initiative. He's not depending or waiting for any government to do what the kingdom asks us to do. Yes, my brother, and please permit go me ahead. to chip this in, right? Oh, go ahead. It's like your, to, it's your, I like it's your to, take. I like, to, I like to tackle problems holistically. Like, you know, in the Bible we read, cast your bread upon many waters. You, you have a better chance of excelling if you do that. I will never rule out the Nigerian government. We have to continuously put pressure, bring pressure to bear on our elected and selected leaders in Nigeria to do the right thing. Also, we have to get our fellow Nigerians to see that we need angel investors. The government alone cannot do it all. In America, for example, the US government doesn't do it all. As far as I'm concerned, the US government didn't give Mark Zuckerberg two million dollars. Angel, right. right. angel investors gave him money. Who are angel investors? For those who may not be too familiar with the term, angel investors are individuals. They are not government officials. They are what you may call the layman or the regular everyday citizen. These are individuals who are interested in the growth and development of science and technology, in inventions and innovations, who know that man-made goods, take note, man-made, man-made goods and services are very important to promote prosperity, peace, and well-being. These angel investors also know that they can make a lot of money from such projects. So it's not just about being altruistic. We, uh, oh, I'm asking you to give money. I'm asking Nigerians. Oh, even if it is 10,000 Naira give, 50,000 Naira give. Oh, just give as a gift. I'm not just asking you to be altruistic. You can be altruistic. We encourage that. However, we are also letting you know, dear Nigerian brothers and sisters, that as an angel investor, First line investors, you can make a lot of money, but you need a lot of patience, you need a lot of love, and you need that attitude that John F. Kennedy is credited with. Think not what your country will do for you, but what you will do for your country, as it were. You need that dogged attitude. So you, you'll, be able, you'll be willing to commit your time and money to these individuals to see that the idea becomes a prototype, the prototype becomes an actual product, that actual product is mass produced, it is sold to Nigerians within Nigeria and around the world. Usually countries that are excelling, if you look at countries that are excelling on the planet, the most developed, most progressive countries on the planet, if you look at them, there are products made inside those countries that are consumed first and foremost by the citizens of that particular country. We need that, and that, that culture where we can have products made in Nigeria that will be consumed by Nigerians 
Nigerians will find them attractive and appealing. The product is successful in Nigeria, and if that is the case, we you have a better chance of seeing that the product will be successful around the world. Look at our right. banking sectors. Right. You have Zenith Bank, for example, and some other new generation, new generation banks. They became successful in Nigeria first before they went out to Ghana and other parts of Africa to, to be successful and to make a lot of money and to render valuable services. It's not just about making money now. It's about what? Right. Rendering services to others, making life more meaningful, making life better and easier, more comfortable, creating opportunities for people to maximize their potentials. Look at Facebook, a social utility platform. It is making people to maximize their potentials already because of Facebook. The internet. Because of the internet, many people around the world are now maximizing their potentials in ways they may never have thought of. So yes, there's money to be made, but we need the mentality in Nigeria. And yes, Niger some Nigerians have it, but I, don't, I believe we don't have the... The percentage is not high enough. The percentage is to grow up. We need to look for ways to inspire more Nigerians to have that mentality. That, yes, we let's support these projects to see that we as Nigerians and Nigeria as a country is adding value, very important, adding value to Nigerians and to fellow human beings around the world. Because we are all brothers and sisters. We're all in it together, you see. So yes, angel investors are important. And then, in addition to angel investors, we have what we call the VCs, venture capitalists. The venture capitalists are really the ones that now take it from, to a higher level. The venture capitalists are those that have the big money. So and usually it starts by angel investors coming in, putting in $1,000, $2,000. For example, I'm an angel investor as well, in addition to being a technology developer. Then, after the angel investors come in, usually angel investors would help up to the prototype stage. But when you talk of mass production, you need venture capitalists, people with the big money, with the $1 million, with the $10 million. Facebook went through that phase. Twitter went through that yeah. phase. Albert yeah. Einstein really went through that phase. Investors. You see, um, this gentleman, that uh, Tesla, some of you may know Tesla. Tesla was originally a European. He was born in Europe, migrated to the United States. Tesla went through that phase. Thomas Edison went through that phase. What are we talking about? You see? So how can we have this in Nigeria? The right mindset, the right mentality. A suggestion I have for Nigerians is crowdfunding. When you see individuals like that, Caro and Shola can only do so much. We need more people on board. When you see, this is a water bicycle that you're, you're showing right now. The prototype being tested in Nigeria about 10 years ago. This, you see, this when was you invented in Nigeria like, 10 years ago. Yes, sir. In Nigeria, in Delta State, you know, when you see people like this, look for ways to come together and crowdfund. The internet makes it easier. We can crowdfund. Nigerians listening to me around in Nigeria and around the world. But I can, this, can, this, can this still be produced? Can people, still, can, still, can, people, can people still invest into this? Not right now, because the key primary figure died tragically. He passed away. But anybody that wants to take this over can get in touch with you too. They can get in touch with me, anybody that wants to take it over. I would have to, I have a, a relationship with his younger brother, and I'm hoping that the younger brother has kept his materials. Because this, bro, this, this is just a little, this is just child's play, to be frank with you guys. This gentleman, Anthony Oroo, had great inventions on paper, remarkable and outstanding inventions. This is just child's play that we were dealing with. There are so much more. But I hope his younger brother kept those materials. And if his family would be willing, then we can pass those materials to, um, to other scientists who would want to keep continue from where he left off. He had an invention as well to generate electricity, 
such a way that you wouldn't need a, what we call NEPA in Nigeria. Wow. That's another invention. Then uh, you, we talked about uh, the machine that produces, that, trans, that uh, converts plastic bags to petroleum products. We showed that, we showed the picture of, of the prototype. That is the second prototype. We have the first prototype on video. The video is not a 100% pleasant video, but it's a, it's a video that, that, that people can watch and see this thing at work. It's been tested in Nigeria. You see? Yeah, you so see that's Gentleman. The, this, the product is called Umbanwe, Umbanwe C12. It's an evil word. Umbanwe means waste to wealth. So we're taking waste and converting it to wealth. All the plastic waste, plastic bags, nylon bags, water satchel bags, water bottles, we can convert all of them back to petrol, to kerosene, and we come up with another byproduct called interlocking stones. We add sand uh. to the byproduct and come up with interlocking stones. This gentleman also has another product, a generator powered by water. This same brother in an state. So we have a working prototype. Do we have the photograph of the generator powered by water or the video? We have the, uh, yeah, I sent your team the video and also the picture. Okay, we are going to it's show there. it now. Oh, but keep yeah. on talking. I think Shola uh, wanted to say something. Yes. Uh, I want to quickly uh, chip in right here uh, as we move forward, as we move on. Uh, uh, Dr. Sonny, if you agree with me, Caro is a dynamic individual and he has taken, uh, he has, uh, taken this, th what we're doing, this project, he has taken it a notch higher, he has taken it, in, uh, taken it a step higher in the sense that he is not just an individual that's uh, focusing or creating one thing. He is kind of, he has the mindset of the ecosystem. That is the ecosystem of bringing players together. And uh, I asked you what was your current uh, project right now. And you talked about uh, changing the mindset of people in Nigeria. So what I see is that, I don't know if you're doing, I think you're doing it already. You have a channel already that is speaking to Nigerians, right? Regarding yes. science and technology. Yes, yes, I do. Please, please, please. We want you to go continue and do that the best way you can because that is what is needed so that you can speak directly to, to Nigerians. And we, I'm so glad you have a network of people you are working with. Then you said something that I will, I'm proposing right now as a suggestion to uh, Dr. Sunday. I'm proposing right now as a suggestion to Dr. Sunday crowdfunding crowdfunding we're talking about funding we're talking about funds here and there so crowdfunding and the idea came to me right where you know as innovators we we get ideas just come to us just at the spot of the moment so we need to set up a crowdfunding uh is it page or whatever then inviting people with the best products the best product is what we are going to present for crowdfunding. For example, if it is this uh, turning uh, waste to wealth that we want to sponsor, we will now put it on the crowdfunding page and say, okay, this is our project for the next three months. We want to see how much we can gather to move it to the next stage. So that is what I am looking at now from your, you know, from what you have said, because like we are saying now, the barrier we have is always funding. And uh, as God we have it, America is always coming up with different kind of, of uh, innovation. And crowdfunding is something we can use in Nigeria. There are some ideas that run through my mind in the past about crowdfunding, but you have now brought it, you just brought it and laid it on the table. And I think it's something we can uh, run with. So. Uh, coming from that, I want to ask, as an individual, you have told us about your current uh, project now. Uh, Dr. Sunday, you are back. I hope you heard uh, oh, yeah, what I just shared now. Do you want to say something about that? Yeah, I think we should do the crowdfunding idea 
after going through all the process, after, you know, like you said, you gave us some process. You said it has to be secured, it has to be certified, it has to be guaranteed. Or after all that is done and it has to be processed through a, a, a what do you call it? A prototype, uh, what is that? Is it prototype company? Right. You pro pro prototype is dangerous. Prototype, yeah. And, uh, patent, patent acquisition as well. Yeah, but he was talking about a place where you manufacture the model, the the prototype. We do it ourselves. Yeah, yeah but we do was, it was yeah. Really. So once that one is done and it is perfected, presented, so it is after that you know we need to have the model, the prototype that is uh, you know sellable. Then, after that, we could go for crowdfunding. Uh, what's your take on that, Carol? Yeah, then that is fine. However, uh, I talked about the role of angel investors. I'm in a network of fellow scientists in Nigeria. One of my buddies and I more or less started a group on WhatsApp where we bring about two years ago, we started this. He's an inventor, innovator himself. We bring inventors and innovators from different parts of Nigeria under one umbrella. So we've been interacting there and also potential investors. I'm talking about inventors and investors. You see, um, one of, there are different products already on ground. One of the key challenges we are facing is we do not have enough angel investors. Dr. Sunday. For us to come up, to get to that level of a working, presentable prototype, we need the requisite number of angel investors. We've not gotten to this. We're not even talking about venture capitalists now. The venture capitalists will come later with their $10 million. But right now, we're talking of angel investors who may people that will come up with $1,000. $2,000, $10,000, to take, to make, to see that this prototype comes to fruition, the working, presentable prototype. So, and this is one of the reasons why we have to encourage one another in Nigeria. Is that what, is that what, is that the stage where we need the crowdfunding to? Crowdfunding would help there. Yeah. Crowdfunding would help there, frankly. So this is one of the reasons yeah. we, are, we are encouraging Nigerians. You see, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to look. I don't want it to look like I'm beating down on Nigerians. I love my Nigerian brothers and sisters. We are going through a lot. You got to take care of your families. You got to take care of your relatives. We are communal. A lot of financial expenditures that is impinging on Nigerians. We understand that, so I don't want to look. I don't want it to look like I'm beating down on Nigerians. However, I would want my viewers to bear with me and let it and let them see from this. Let them see things from this perspective that I'm appealing to Nigerians. So, you do a business, you make a profit of five thousand dollars, right? Your tight is five hundred dollars. I'm appealing to Nigerians. Instead of taking your, the entire 10%, $500, to a church where you don't even know what they are doing with the money, why not split that $500? Take $200 oh. to that church. Even if the church is doing good things with your money, bless them, thank God. Can you please split your $500? Take $200 to that church. The church will continue doing the good things they are doing, and God will provide for them. Again, the three hundred dollars left, look, give to these scientists in Nigeria. And this this one can, will bring money. It will bring investment back to them. Yeah, right. and it will bring investment to you. You may give them as a gift. That's fine. Or you may give, give, give them as an investment. You tell them, I am an investor in what you're doing. And by the grace of God, the product will see the light of day. You will make money. You just need to be patient. Some of us Nigerians, we go to the club on weekends. 
in the United States, in Europe, in Nigeria, and other parts of the world, one weekend, we may spend $1,000. This is a fact. So I'm appealing to Nigerians. I know you have families to take care of. You have relatives to assist. But this is where this spirit of the collective comes in. This spirit that the Japanese have, where they have to piece together and make sacrifices to develop Japan. I'm appealing. Instead of spending $1,000 on a weekend on a, on the, in the ninth club or in an amusement park, why not change your budget? Spend $600. And then you have $400 left. We are showing some video now. We are showing some video now. Can you tell us what's happening here? That is the water-powered generator. This is the, that gentleman is the Emeka Nelson that I work with. He is an inventor, an innovator. I work with him in my capacity as a technology developer. Emeka Nelson. The, 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 the generator is powered by water. You, are, you don't need so NEPA. You don't need, yeah. What, what kind of investment would this kind of guy need to take this to the market or to take it to the world? Good. Right now, this is a working prototype that would, that would produce, it, it, it produces, it generates about close to one kilowatt of electricity. Actually, about 600 kilowatts, 600, 700 watts, 600, 700 watts of electricity. But the good news now, after about two years, we have improved on the technology. We can now build one that would generate 15 kVA of electricity. 15 kVA of electricity will power a whole building in Nigeria. A building of four, of four flats, of two or three bedrooms each. We, we now have a prototype that will power it. What does it need? And the what fuel is water. It uses water. You don't need NEPA, you don't need... Uh, traditional electric electricity company water we have the technology this is a working prototype and we have moved it a step further from just 600 watts to 15 kva okay uh, uh, Twenty thousand dollars. quickly which which quickly to sorry go ahead uh, sorry quickly to to, to chip in here, uh, what we are saying is now kind of like we, we are moving ahead of what we are saying already. So we are talking about, Dr. Sunday, we are talking about when do we need the crowdfunding. So we are saying we need the crowdfunding when there is a prototype. So now we have a prototype, so it means like even the crowdfunding we need is, is almost late now. It's like we need it like yesterday. So if we start so a crowdfunding like for this, like how much money do I, we need to raise for this for it to be to go to the market? With fifty thousand dollars, yes. we'll get a good prototype. Okay. With fifty thousand dollars, we'll get a good prototype. So we could go fund I mean crowdfunding for fifty thousand dollars and produce an excellent prototype. Working prototype. And this, right. this, this, right. this prototype I'm talking about is not what you're seeing right now on YouTube. What you're seeing right now is 600 watts of electricity. With $50,000, we'll get something that would now, we will, we will be able to implement the next step or the advancement that we have come up with, which is 15 kVA, kilovolts ampere. And then we could build, uh, from that, we could get sponsors who will build a factory whereby we could do mass production in thousands, in hundreds of thousands. And that is when it will be cheap and it will be affordable for every family. Exactly. Because when you mass produce, you, 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 you secure your materials, you get, you get good discounts from the different vendors. And the price... 
Okay, Shola, we are only having okay. five more minutes to go. How do we? How do we, would you like us to round up today? Yeah, uh, I would like to round up by saying this quickly. Uh, if you remember the uh, proposals I sent to you, I think uh, that's why I said uh, Caro is a dynamic uh, <laughs> individual because he's bringing out so many things that we, we, we have in plans and, you know, he's a forward thinker. So one of the things I wanted to keep in is that in the proposals I sent to you, let us start now doing, let us now start a project or a program where we will now take one, one invention, one project every month that will now be the focus of our crowdfunding. Maybe it may be, uh, it may be every three months so that we are allowed time to be able to bring money together. But let us now start that uh, project where we will look at all kinds of inventions, all kinds of uh, projects that are being done, then the best we will now take and say, this one is either we will crowdfund to build a pro prototype or we want to crowdfund to, to do other things, or maybe yes, to I get think, uh, angel I, investors to now I start. Think, um, uh, I think, uh, Shola, you know, you know that the investors that we have access to, they don't fund 50,000, 100,000, 200,000, 1 million even. Right. They found the big right. millions, big millions. But for them to be able to, right. yes, for them to be able to yeah. fund things like this, we need to have the crowdfunding to come up with the small money, 100,000, 50,000 to do the prototype before they can give, we could go into the millions that will build factory and do mass production. That is right. That is it. absolutely right. That is what I'm talking about exactly. We crowdfund to build great prototype, great working prototype, then we can produce, we can present to uh, uh, sophisticated investors, institutional uh, investors, that is the venture capitalist too. So that's my take. And uh, I want to welcome everybody to join the DASIC uh, group. Type D A C I C S. It will bring you to the group. It's also uh, will, it has been shown and it will be shown on the screen as well. Join us. Let us start working together. We are bringing amazing, talented, and forward-looking uh, individuals of African descent and uh, people from all parts of Africa. We're not talking of just Nigeria now. All parts of Africa. If you are African or African descent, we're welcoming you. To work with us on DASIC. Who are and, the people? Uh, who are the people we are forward. inviting? What categories of people? Yes, we we want all the investors. We so, oh, sorry, starting from inventors, innovators, inventors that have produced devices, some kind of devices that is that can be used, tangible devices can, that can be patented. Innovators, people that are changing business systems, they are changing way improving on products. We're welcoming uh, philanthropists, we're welcoming investors, we're welcoming resource persons, resource persons in all field of human endeavor, doctors, lawyers, engineers, all kind of people. We, we want you on board because there's some prototype that need the knowledge of African engineers to build it. So we need everybody with those skills. And the, the, the requirement for joining us is that you're bringing something to the table. You, you may not have the funds, but you have an idea. You have something to bring to the table. Answer those three questions, join us, and let's keep uh, working together to move Africa forward. This is on Facebook. Yes, it's on Facebook. Join us on, on Facebook, D-A-C-I-C-S. Once you type it on Facebook, D-A-C-I-C-S, it will bring you to the page. Ask, answer three questions that will let us know that you are in the right place and you also will know that you are in the right place. Then you connect with us and we move on. And we need also uh, resource persons to join our admin because right now we are bringing even more and it's unbelievable. The people we are getting in contact with now, people that are getting in contact with us, some are even manufacturing their product already. Some are doing amazing things they are coming and we need to manage the processes of bringing them on air and all that. So if you are a resource person uh, with uh, 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 expertise 
in uh, administration, technology, well, all kind maybe of fields. P PR, Join us. public relations, marketing. Public relations, marketing, all kinds of field that you know you want to contribute to Africa. Join us. We want you to join our team. The team of presenting people to the program, the team of bringing people on the platform and administering, administrating and, you know, organizing. We need organization now because the dream and the vision is getting bigger and bigger by the day. Carol, you so would you like to say something before we go, Carol? Uh, thank you, Dr. Sunday, for your passion, your vision, and what you, God is using you to do in Ukraine and literally around the world. And God takes the glory. We give the glory to God. Thank you for being a vessel, a yielding vessel for the Father to make use of. God is not looking for golden vessels. We are not perfect. But God is primarily looking for yielding vessels. Vessels that will impact the planet in different areas and different sectors. I mean, you are a pastor, but see what you're doing. And uh, we thank our brother Shola as well for his contribution. And my viewers, brothers and sisters around the world watching us and who will be watching at a later time, I appreciate you. I thank you. Pray for Nigeria. But let us not just pray alone. We have to work. The divine paradise father as a principle. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. And this is the universal principle. God the Father thinks the thoughts. God the Son speaks the word. God the Spirit does the deed. If we must excel in Nigeria, we have to understand and implement this forever tested, tried, and true principle. Think the right thoughts. Pastor Sunday teaches about thinking. And to think the right thoughts, you must be a student in the art of questioning. You cannot think the right thoughts without being a prolific student in the art of questioning. As a people, as a collective, I'm not talking about individual successes. We are, we are tired of that. We know we have individual successes all over the world. We are some of us here are one of those. But we're but, but we frank with you, the black race needs more than individual successes. We need a success as a collective. So we must learn to put our differences aside, tribal differences, religious differences, put all those things aside and come together as a collective, the diversity that we have should be a blessing, not a curse. The diversity must be a blessing, not a curse. Come together as a collective to ask the right questions, to think the right thoughts, to speak the right words, and to do the right deeds. When we get this in place, Nigeria will be transformed. Dr. Sunday said something a while back, and that is very true. Nigeria has a chance of becoming a superpower. Do you know why? We are a very diverse nation. If you study human history, from the very first day the first man and woman walked on the planet, study human history, nations that have become superpowers and nations that are diverse, it will be very difficult for a nation like Norway that is not as diverse as Nigeria to become a superpower. Even right now as we speak, Norway is one of the most forward-looking, progressive countries on the planet. But that superpower status, you need diversity. Because the people from different cultures, different backgrounds, different mentalities, they come with all kinds of experience and they bring it to the table and they make the soup sweet. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much, uh, Caro. I think you, we are looking forward to you to bring all those your inventors and innovators that you have with you. And I think that Correct. you will arrange with Shola. Anybody you present will be ready to receive them. And if you want to start the crowdfunding, let's begin to, you know, start the process for that as well. And, um, yeah, here we go. And uh, thank you so much, Shola. Thank you so much, Carol. We'll see you next Sunday. God thank bless. Thank you so much for having me, sir. Bye. Thank you. God bless. Bye.